Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Okay, so, uh, uh, tonight I'm going to talk about uh, Heroku Pipelines. Uh, I'm just basically going to share uh, the setup, the infrastructure setup uh, we are using in my current company, which is Grow360. So, a little about myself. Uh, my name is Errol. So, you can, yeah, Errol Cornoles, you can just call me Errol. Uh, I'm a software engineer for Grow360. So, uh, if you want to uh, see some of my works, uh, you can follow me in GitHub. Uh, so, the link's there. And I'm also one, uh, <coughs> whenever I can, I contribute to open source. And some of the projects I contribute to are Roman, are Rails, and Hanami. So, what's uh, Heroku Pipeline is all about. Uh, definition of a Heroku Pipeline, it's a group of... Are, is, are uh, anyone familiar with Heroku here? Familiar with Heroku? So, and anyone familiar with pipelines? Okay, okay. So, Heroku is a pass. It's a platform as a service uh, with, wherein you can deploy your application. So it's different, uh, when it's similar, it's very similar to Amazon or Google Cloud, <coughs> Google Cloud Engine, uh, but there's another layer. So it's instead of an infrastructure as a service, it's a platform as a service. Uh, there's another layer where, which, <coughs> which helps developers uh, or which eases, the, uh, which eases deployment of applications for developers. Uh, and a Heroku pipeline is a group of Heroku apps that share the same code base. But apps in a pipeline do not necessarily share the same configuration. So if anyone here is similar, uh, is familiar with DevOps uh, and deployment, uh, I think you'll, you'll get the description. Uh, I think it's better also if I visually so, show uh, what it looks like. So this is what a Heroku pipeline looks like. Uh, so there, in this pipeline, there are these stages where there are the environments. Uh, so you have production. So that's production. It's the app called app. It's the app that all your users or customers are using. Uh, there's staging, uh, which is basically what developers or what your QA uses to test the application. And there are also review apps. Uh, review apps, it's, uh, I think Heroku just released this earlier this year. Uh, and review apps gives you the functionality to test your features in isolation. And more on that. Uh, but first, uh, why? Uh, so, why would you want to use Heroku? And why would you like to use Heroku pipelines? So, I have two points here. Uh, or rather, yeah, two points uh, for using Heroku and Heroku pipelines. Uh, number one, uh, you're letting Heroku manage your infrastructure uh, or your infrastructure complexity. So you, you or your team can focus on your product. If you're a startup uh, or to be very specific, you're an early stage or a seed stage startup, uh, the number the number one thing you should be focusing on is your product. So, and the best way to focus on your product is to let uh, third parties manage your complexity. So, for for CI, uh, if you're an early stage, you are in the, in the very early stages of development. Uh, it's it's advisable that you let third parties manage and everything that is not product related. So for CI, there's own CI. Uh, so for, uh, for EPOS, you have GitHub, you have Bitbucket. Uh, and for infrastructure, instead of going per, not per metal, or instead of going directly with, instead of going directly with Amazon, uh, Heroku is a very attractive alternative. But, why would you want to use Heroku Pipelines this early? Uh, 
as you can see in this ano uh, in this uh, what you call this in this screenshot uh, this setup is uh, as a, is an infrastructure setup that is used by most mature teams so this is not very early stage looking so unlike other teams which are just pushing production direct directly you have a production environment you have a staging environment and you also have apps where you can test your your features in isolation so why would you why would you want to use Heroku pipelines it's an opportunity to adopt good engineering practices for deployment early on without the added complexity of having to do it yourself uh, in Amazon or in AWS or in G or in GCE or in bare metal. So walk through the next this is going to be a demo of how to set up uh, what you call this uh, Hero pipelines. It's under Hearst so please bear with me. So we have we have a sample app here uh, hosted in GitHub, uh, or rather uh, the code base is hosted in GitHub, GitHub called Hedgehog. So that's the name of an application. And here is uh, the Heroku dashboard. So when you sign up to Heroku, that's what you're going to see. So the first step, if you are going to do, uh, what you call this, preparing to set up pipe, know, Heroku pipelines, is to create an application. Uh, if you don't have an Heroku, a Heroku application yet, uh, you're going to need to create one. And that's what we're going to do next. So we're going to create a Heroku application. Again. There you go. Creating, an, creating a Heroku application is very straightforward. Uh, you, you provide the name. So we're going to call this, since it's going to be a, we're going to assume that this application is our production stage or it's the it's the application that we are going to use to serve our users, so we can call it Hedgehog Production. Also, you are given an option to choose which region you are serving. We're going to use to serve uh, to serve your application under the hood. Heroku is using Amazon, uh, but there's only two regions currently available, which is United States and Europe. So for this, you know, for this demo, we're going to host our application in the United States region, and then we click create that. So right now we have our first head, our first Heroku application uh, named Hedgehog Production. Doesn't really contain anything yet. Uh, Heroku Heroku's model is very tied to Git, 
in the sense that uh, for an application to exist, you need to either push to it or assign a, a get EO. So since we already have uh, our application already, already existing in GitHub, we're going to connect to GitHub. And then we are presented with an option if we want automatic deploys. That means that whenever we push to a specific branch in, in our repo, uh, it automatically gets deployed. So for now, we're going to choose yes to enable automatic deploys. There's also an option at the bottom if you want to manually deploy uh, the, uh, a specific branch. So for now, we're going to leave this as a yes. Then let's see if the app has already been deployed. So as you can see, we chose to automatically deploy our app, but since we just connected it and there were no recent pushes, uh, there is no build in progress. So we're going to manually deploy it. And we are going to deploy the master branch. This is a bare bones Rails app, so the deploy plot process uh, shouldn't take too long. But if you have a, a large uh, Rails app, especially uh, a Rails app with a lot, of, a lot of assets and a lot of gems, uh, it's probably going to take a couple of minutes. And now it's already deployed, and we can see our app, our production app. So this one is just a bare bones application. It's showing a video of a hedgehog uh, pressing the uh, what this, the touch of an iPhone. <laughs> and now we have our production app. So Heroku has an option in the dashboard to create a pipeline. Uh, right now, we don't have an existing pipeline so we could create a pipeline from this app. And we are going to call it Hedgehog. So right now, as you can see, it's almost very similar to what we have in the screenshot. So we already have our production app. Uh, it's saying that it auto deploys and master. Uh, it's also saying that we deployed it a, couple, a minute ago. And it's also saying the repo assigned to it. But that's production, and you shouldn't be pushing to production, uh, which for this or the, the ideal scenario or the best practice is you shouldn't be pushing production uh, directly. So we're going to create our staging app. Right now, if we want to create a staging app, it's going to ask us for a, an application. And just like uh, what I mentioned earlier, pipelines are individual apps that share the same code base. So it needs, the app we're going to play needs to have the same code base. Uh, there are a couple of, uh, which I just, there are a couple of ways to create or clone an, an app so that it's, uh, it's using the, the same code base. Uh, but for this instance, we're going to use the CLI to fork our production application. Um, 
So in the name of the book, I, for this to work, we need to install the Heroku CLI tools. Uh, right now, I have it installed so we can use it. And the name of the the name of the command we are going to invoke is Heroku port. So it's port. It's similar to clone. Uh, and it it takes two arguments. So it needs you need to specify uh, the source application. So you provide it from. And you also need to specify the destination application. So in this case, we're going to name our staging application as Hedgehog Staging. And this command is going to take a couple, well, almost a minute. There you go. We already have our staging app. And the next step is to add that staging app to our stage, to our uh, staging stage. And we, that's what we're going to do next. So now we have our Hedgehog staging app. Let's try to see if it's working. And there you go. Also, see if our, if our production is still working. Production is still working. And as you can see, uh, the, the, the URL uh, is based on the name of the app. So, for the case of our production app, it's Hedgehog Production. That Heroku app. That all. In the case of Hedgehog, this case of in the case of our staging app, it's Hedgehog Staging. That Heroku app. That all. One thing to note here in this in this current setup is we have uh, opted to auto deploy uh, the production using master or must master branch, and there's nothing in our there's no configuration in our staging staging application. So what we're going to do is switch the configuration. So first we're going to disable auto deploy in production. And then afterwards, we're going to enable auto-deploy auto in staging. We also need to, we've, we've cloned the app, but uh, we also need to to specify again the repo it's, it's going to use. And then afterwards, we just enable automatic deploys. So that's it. So, so we've set up uh, in our pipeline, we set up a production app. We've also set up a staging app, and we can test it by making a pseudo change to our application. So let's say we wanted uh, we wanted to change the title of uh, what's being shown when users go to our app.
So what we're going to do is make a small change, and we are just going to change the text of our homepage. So instead of the best security, we're going to call it the hedgehog security. And then it's typical, you know, typical kit. So we're going to stage our changes, and we are also going to commit our changes, and then afterwards push it. Now we push the change to GitHub, and since we we have uh, enabled auto deploy in our staging application, it should deploy uh, whatever changes we just committed to master. And as you can see, it's building the app right now. So we can also check the logs of its build. Okay, it's been deployed. As you can see, our production app was deployed nine minutes ago, and our staging app was deployed less than a minute ago, or just now. And we can check if the changes are already live. So let's open the app in, in our browser. Item has been changed in staging. Let's see in production if it has been changed. And production is still as it is. So it's still the best security versus in staging, uh, which says the hedgehog security. Now, let's say uh, someone is manually QA, you know, doing QA in staging, and the QA, the Q, that QA person or your QA team has already given the heads up that all the changes can be deployed in production. So there are actually two ways to do it. Uh, one is doing it through the UI. There's a button here to promote uh, your staging production. And there's also uh, the CNI, where you can just issue uh, hello to promote. But for this uh, for this walkthrough, we're going to use the web UI. So let's assume that, the Q, uh, that all changes are now ready to deploy to production. And before you deploy it, you can you have an opportunity to view all the changes. And as you can see, what we're going to deploy is just one commit, uh, and the description is change title. So that you have visibility, or at least uh, some level of visibility in what you're uh, deploying to production. So now, uh, you can see that the Hedgehog production, the status is de deployed less than a minute ago. And if we check production, our changes are already there. So that's half of the Heroku pipeline. Uh, there's, there's only one, uh, no, there's only one, uh, what you call this, missing in our stage, which are review, which is review apps. So if your teams, if your team setup is, you know, uh, or rather a production, a staging and a production environment 
uh, set up sufficient for your team, uh, this will do. But if you have a significant uh, number of team members committing different features and you want to test that in isolation, uh, you, will, you might want to take a look at it review apps and that's what we're going to do next. So right now we're enabling review apps for for our hedge hub pipeline. You need to take note that when you enable review apps, you should not use production to inherit. You should always be inheriting from your staging application. And now, that's it, we enable review apps. So how review apps work is you commit your changes as PRs or pull requests on GitHub. And that's what we're going to do next. So let's assume we want to change the title again. Uh, but this time, instead of committing it directly to master, we're going to do it by a, by a pull request. And just like I mentioned earlier, how review apps work, it's tied to pull requests on GitHub. So now we're going to open a pull request. So let's open one now. So let's just, just leave the title as is. Let's create the PR. And then after the PR has been made, We have an option to create a review app for that particular PR, which is PR number five, and the title has changed title again. So let's create the view. Let's create the review app now. And our review app is done. And if you have QA doing acceptance test uh, for you, you can open it in the browser. As you can see, the URL this time has a tag with the PR number. So we have our new title, our staging app is still the same, and our production app still untouched. Now, if you want to promote this, or rather merge this, uh, you're going to have to do it by GitHub again. So assuming that it's already, uh, this feature has already been accepted, you can do the merge. Once, once the PR has been merged, that review app is destroyed, and then it's going to be uh, deployed to staging automatically because we chose to automatically deploy master. As you can see, it's building it right now. And once everything has been merged, your QA team can do an, an acceptance sense, uh, acceptance tests against with everything integrated. And when he's done, when everything is still accepted, we can just promote it production again. 
and you can see what's going to be what's going to be deployed to production. So this time we are uh, deployed to production the PR number PR number five, which is the change title again. So promotion to promote, uh, unlike pushing or rather unlike building up, unlike building an application, uh, promoting production uh, just takes a couple of seconds uh, because instead of building another slug, you're just promoting uh, the slug which is existing in your staging to production. So it's it's uh, it's faster than uh, building another application or deploying again. And let's just do a final check of our production. And our change is there. So that's it. All right. Thank you, Errol, for that. Uh, oh. Questions? So if the settings of staging is different from production, for example, our app right now it has obviously different settings so that you can, our app sends SMSs so we don't want it to send SMSs to our clients so we're using test accounts and similarly our our tiers in our production uh, app are different. In production, we're using the premium zero. In uh, staging, we're using just web two. So how do you differentiate uh, production with staging using that? Uh, using that, uh, you, you basically configure, uh, for you to differentiate staging uh, with production, you configure it through the dashboard again. You so you are going to configure uh, the individual apps so uh, let's 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 assume that we want this uh, uh which about this to a different shape or it, in your example you do not want to send uh SMS. SMS. Uh, you can and the the useful way you do uh, you do that in heroku is through the two flags or environment variables so in heroku you can manage environment variables so we, we're going to manage, and this is the way to do it. Uh, you can manage environment variables by uh, the web UI. You can also manage it by uh, the CLI. And we can just introduce a flag called disable, do not send SMS. Or rather send SMS in production. And since this flag or this environment variable is just available in production, uh, you can use it in your configuration, in your app configuration. So you, uh, in your code, you can have a conditional check for the environment flag. And in staging, environment variable does not exist. Alright, right. any, any more questions? questions? Okay, we have a raffle.